Welcome back to another episode of That's Business. Today's guest, Antonia Ziegler, is the founder and principal coach of Cut Loose, offering intuitive life alignment coaching to overwhelmed and frustrated midlife women and professionals. She helps women to intuitively cut to the root of their issues and shake loose all that's hidden so that they can wake up to their truest self and align with their desires toward living a joyful, intentional, and impactful life. You Untangled, which is Antonia's deep and unique transformational coaching program, has helped her and others to climb out of lifelong misery into authentic joy. The program originates from lessons and teachings she has picked up throughout her own challenges. She is also a newly certified energy medicine practitioner and an avid student of Andean mysticism and anything on the verge of woo-woo. It is her mission to make the world a better place by making spirituality and personal transformation practical and available to everyone. Her motto is, it's never too late, especially to grow and evolve. Antonia, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast because we have a lot to talk about here. But how are we doing today? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Amazing. So I want to say you're my first guest, but don't quote me on that, that you actually grew up in Germany. So throwing it back to your childhood, what was your childhood like growing up in Germany and spending most of your life there? Walk us through that. Well, growing up in Germany, well, it certainly was very different compared to here because I have twins now. They are 18. So they grew up here in the States. Growing up in Germany, we were way more independent. Like we could roam around and freely ride our bikes, take the bus. We were 10 years old and would go places that kids here would dream of. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's something we had talked about before we started recording was about the different school systems. So now that we are recording, Walk us through it. And I believe what you had said is you don't necessarily have to drop out of high school, but how is the school system different than what it is here? Yeah, you can take different routes in, in Germany. You can go up to 13 years to school, which is like high school level, or I would say it's like an IB, like it's a more advanced educational level. And then you can choose 10 years or can you can choose nine years. And maybe speaking about myself, about my own past, like I was a child, I never really knew what I wanted. And who I was, it was just, yeah, it was really hard for me. Like I picked the most academic way schooling, which is like the 13 years. But then after 10 years, I decided it's not my path. I cannot handle it. I was like the worst student you can imagine, except for music and sports. I was just really bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I never was a school person either. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah. But then, you know, things shifted for me once I left that school and did apprenticeships because in Germany you can do like this vocational training. So you don't have to study to get into work life and even make good money. So that's what was my path in the beginning. But still, I don't know. I just never really knew what I wanted. So I picked something. I, I wanted to be like an interior designer or like not studying it, but still working in that field. But I couldn't get anything back then because I was at the end of the baby boomer. So we were a lot of students out there trying to find work. So the, yeah, that didn't really happen for me. But I just yeah made my way through it and trying different things and then went back to school later and did end up going to college, but still not choosing what was really good for me. So that was something. <laughs> and then we actually moved to the United States. So this was 21 years ago. Wow. That's when I, with my husband, like he got an assignment in the automotive industry. And that was for me the time when I said, oh, that's a good chance for me to drop everything. Like I was in the corporate world, just drop it and then come here and start a new life. So those were my thoughts. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge life change moving literally across the world. So because I know in other countries, typically you do learn another language, but did you and your husband speak English at the time or what was that kind of transitional period moving across the country or across the world, I should say? Well, you know, English wasn't a big deal for me. I've lived abroad before. I was in Malta in the Mediterranean for three years. That's where I worked in the automotive. That was my first job actually after I finished college. Yeah. I worked in Malta and, and learned English there. So it was a very Maltese English, like an old, <laughs> old English. But yeah, the language itself was not an issue. And I always said it doesn't matter where you move. Even within Germany, I moved around and people are different wherever you are. So that wasn't a big issue for me. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So 21 years ago, you have this fresh start. I mean, essentially, what did you dive into and kind of transitioning into where you're at now? Yeah, well, that was another journey because 
you know, moving here, I, we just got married and then I thought if I have kids, then things will be different. And I did get, I had twins two, two years later. So I was at the age of 40, I had my twins, which was the best gift I could ever get. It was a gift of heaven, truly. Yeah. But still, you know, things didn't go so smoothly. I was like in, on the inside, I was just not a happy person. Yeah. On the outside, things look great. Married, like we moved into this lovely place here now up in Oxford, 10 acres of land and wow, beautiful set of twins, that boy and a girl. So it's all you could ask for. But still, I wasn't happy. And that's when back in 2016, it was just enough. And then there was the right email in my inbox and offering a workshop on getting in touch with your yearnings. And so that's what opened up something for me. And then I joined that community and then I knew I, I need to get certified. Like I need to share the work with others so that I stay in it. And but then at the same time, share it with others. And that's what I realized. And that's my passion now that I, I want to share it with others in one-on-one -on -one or in groups. And it's, it's amazing. That is amazing. Now, in this program that you're in, or you did, I should say, what did that kind of look like? And where was that, I guess I can say, aha moment of being like, I need to share this with other women and really help them out? Mm. First of all, joining that group, I realized I'm not the only one because you always think you're the only one who is suffering, but you're not. So we just don't, you don't see it, you know, like you, you only see a face. But you don't see in the inside. So that was my biggest thing that I realized. Oh, wow, I'm not the only one. We all have our different stories and no one is worse or better. You know, it's just different. And then I just like after six months, because it was a nine month program. And then I just knew I just, how, how can I stay in this work so that I don't after nine months close the book and then just go back to the old ways because that's what happens too. So you really, what I realized, I have to stay in the content in a way. And the only way to do that was becoming a coach myself. And it's a path. I'm growing. I've been growing ever since. So it's just a nonstop learning and exploring new ways of being. Something you just brought up of staying aligned, because I do feel a lot of people you go to, whether it's TEDx or you listen to these impactful speeches or do coaching, and then a lot of people fall off and resort back to old ways because that's the easy route. So yeah, kind of transitioning into how you do this incredible coaching program without giving away the trade secrets, of course, but what are some ways that you've really impacted women's lives or how you're different than some of these other coaches that are out there? Mm. I would say I'm different in a sense that I, I can really sense into the core, like the linchpin kind of like the blind spot. So what, what's happening here? What's holding you back? And, and it's, those are things that you don't even think of yourself. It's like in my case, I, I realized that I had this belief that I don't belong. And then, yeah, I'm alone. I don't belong. And that's how I showed up. I don't belong. You know, it's kind of the energy. Like I, I showed people that's how I show up. So that's what I got back. Nobody really included me. Well, it wasn't always that bad, but it's, yeah, it's just the energy that you put out there. And that's what I manage with women that I work with too, that they really, they there's a shift happening. It's on the inside. And then like they have a deeper understanding of who they truly are. And then they show up differently. It's powerful. It is true because a lot of people, I think, feel the same way. But like you said, not too many people are talking about it or open about it, of feeling lonely. And I think the pandemic did bring that out of a lot of people of, hey, mental health's a big issue and it doesn't discriminate whether you're 18 or 68. I mean, it's still very relevant. And how you and I met, I don't want to say weird relationship, but we've been in the same room where I have heard, I heard of you, you had heard of me. And then I finally was able to hear you give an incredible presentation for Coterie. But it's you sharing your own vulnerabilities and talking about your own journey and especially um, having your twins and moving and all. I mean, what you do is such impactful work. And I cannot stress that enough of you're realistic and I love your program Cut Loose and everything that's a part of it. So diving into that, and I want you to talk about, you said you're an energy medicine practitioner. Well, I know what this is, but tell our audience, what does that mean or what do you do for that? So maybe share quickly why, because when I do my transformational work, I always thought something is missing. So there's some part like I could be more powerful. And that's what I realized then when I add in the energy work. It is more powerful because what I do with the women, it doesn't matter if they're here in person 
or I do it online over Zoom. I, I don't even have to see them, but it's really kind of we touch on to the energy bubble. Like we are all surrounded by an energy bubble and and there are imprints there from the trauma that we experienced, the childhood, what we inherited from our parents. It's just like there are certain imprints on, on this energy bubble and they affect our body. And I can sort of track where, where it sits, like when there's an issue coming up with whatever they're dealing with. Sometimes you think it's in my heart, but then it's somewhere else. So we just kind of track where is it, where's the, the energy blockage? And then I help releasing it and it really, it just amplifies the healing for the client. And it, it depends, you know, it's very intuitive what, what I do, how I do it. I also learned ancestral work and it's working with an altar and giving what you want to let go. Just give it to the fire, like let go. There are certain rituals, that are like very simple rituals that you can do to let go. And it's just intention, like energy follows intention. That's what it is. So the work that I do and the work that the client does and just it always with the intention to let go and then, but then also infuse it with what you really truly want. So that's, those are always the two parts. Like what, what are you wanting to let go or willing to let go and then infuse it with something of a higher vibration. I love energy work. And if you're listening to this and you've never gone through energy work, energy healing, it's really undescribable. And it almost feels as a whole, like a like you, I don't want to say wake up, but you kind of do. You feel lighter. You feel good. You feel empowered. It's definitely been transformational, but it's yeah. I cannot recommend it enough there. And it's so important, too, because like you said, healing childhood trauma, healing from pieces that you bury deep within to be in that next stage of life. And I don't want to say we are our own worst enemies, but oftentimes it is, whether it's your career, yeah. your relationships, who you are as a person, confidence. I mean, and I love that you help your niche of women that you do, because I feel a lot of times it's like, OK, you're in your 40s plus, best of luck to you. Or even when women get out of their 20s or you need to be beautiful. You need to be this. You need to be perfect, but not too aggressive. And it's just this whole thing. But what you do is so incredible to focus on. Mm -hmm. I want to talk through what Indian mysticism is, because some of our listeners may not know. So what does that mean that you are a student and active practitioner of it? So I maybe I can say I started out with the Four Winds Society and maybe some people might know. So that's the energy practitioner certification that I got. But then I just noticed for myself, the Indian mysticism, it comes from Peru, from the mountains of Peru. And the woman that I discovered, she's been studying with two Pacos, or like two healers from that area. And they all have different ways how to wake with energy, but the way she's teaching it to us. And it's so simple. You know, it's really about life force energy. It's all out there. You just, you know, let it stream over your energy bubble, let it go into your body. And it's always the intention. Energy follows intention. So when you intend, you want to have your, your body cleansed, just tell the energy to do so. And it something will happen. And I'm still learning on it, but I just love the simplicity of it all. So that's why I'm so fascinated by the Andean mysticism. And that's how she calls it. And she doesn't call it shamanism or anything. She calls it mysticism. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's really about maybe what I want to share as well, because that's where I'm so passionate about. We all have our own inner light. Like we are born with an Inca seed. That's what she calls it. So we are sort of part of the bigger web or like we are part of the creation. We are all one. But then at the same time, we are all unique, like in our own ways. And, and it, that's what I'm really about here too in my work, to just bring that light out of every single person that I get to touch. Yeah. So that you really truly understand who you are. Yes. And it's a different form of spirituality where I feel it does a great job of, I don't want to say pieces of different religion, but like you said, bringing out the best in someone or bringing out their own power, their own higher power, own energy. I mean... That's why I love this so much of what you preach and what you do, because it really is very inclusive to anyone that you work with. Well, now, moving forward, what does it look like if someone wanted to work with you? I know you said, of course, some of the energy work starting there, but it honestly sounds like a culmination of a little bit of therapy, a little bit of energy work, like all the best things there. So what does it look like if someone wanted to work with you or where do you kind of start with them? So first of all, they want to work with me. Yes. <laughs> that's the biggest, 
I think that's the commitment. That's how it starts. If they're really committed, you know, like that's the big start. And then we have an intake session and then I go deep, you know, they have questions that they answer, but it's really about getting in touch with their vision, with their yearnings that you have. And it's not about having a beautiful house and a, and a nice car. It's really, it's, it goes deeper. So what are your deepest yearnings and how does, if you had a magic wand, you know, what would your life look like? That's, so that's already a big question. Like I was many years ago, I'm like, oh, I, I don't know what I want. I knew what I didn't want. So, but then you can reverse that. So that's a tip for people. If you know what you don't want, just flip it, make it positive. So what do you want instead? That's how we start. And then we go into what's holding you back because there's always something that is holding you back while you're not getting where you want to be. And that's where we dive deep then. And that's where it's, it gets very individual on the person where they are at. Amazing. And I love that you said if you had a magic wand, because when I do career coaching, I say, if I'm a genie and I could grant you your perfect career, what does that look like? So I didn't know you used the magic wand. That's so funny. That makes total sense. <laughs> this is something I've been exploring a lot, of course, reminiscent of childhood and healing from some trauma and we love therapy and all, but it's so interesting. It's something I've been thinking about a lot of, you know, you're told as a little kid, what do you want to do? Be imaginative, be who you are, you know? And then at some point it transitions into, oh, well, don't be too loud or, oh, don't be too this or don't be too that. Or you need to go to college and get a real job and whatever a real job is. And then it's looked down upon if you want to do something more unique, if it's creative, if it's, you know, out of the ordinary. And then it's almost, I, and I feel a lot of people, especially that I've met like yourself, who, okay, well, what am I meant to do? And a lot of times we fall into these paths, but it's kind of like this roller coaster we're on of figuring out what that is. And I always say this, I preach this through and through of how you're supposed to know what you want to do at, I mean, 12 years old, at 18 years yeah. old. I mean, I am not the same person I was at 18, even in like your 20s, you yeah. change so much. And that's something that I don't feel is addressed of these different stages of life and throw in a pandemic, throw in some recessions, all these awful things that happen. I mean, we don't talk about how that affects your well-being, your mental health, and everything aligned with that. So now, what are some of those pieces of how you came up with your motto, which I love, and I actually wrote it down because you said it at your presentation of it's never too late, especially to grow and evolve. So Tell us the story, because when you told it to me at that presentation, it was so impactful. But how did you come up with that motto yourself? Because I'm a living example of it. <laughs> yeah. I just turned 59. So and I, I just feel now I found the past. You know, like that's what I want to do until I die. I think I don't want to stop working. I'm the same way. Yes. Because people in my age, they start talking about retirement. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm, I'm just starting. I don't want to retire. And I had clients, they were older, they were like in their mid end 70s. And I helped them getting past their childhood traumas because I think it's a generation. They went through the world, Second World War before and after and just not good things. And maybe it's well, German too. So maybe that's another thing, like be having been German and living there. And but it's just, yeah, it's never too late. You can, even on their last day before you die, healing can happen. And that's what they say in the Andes too. Live as if this was your last day. It's true. So as if you're, you know, just, okay, I'm ready. I can leave anytime. Yeah. So that's how you, how we want to live our life. That you're just fine, not attached, actually, as well. Yeah. Don't be attached. Right. If something's not bringing you happiness, because another subject, you're just hitting on all the like things I've been really like thinking about and being philosophical a lot about lately. But the whole concept of waiting until retirement or waiting until this is the end or, oh, I'm retired. I can't do anything. I mean, but who says that? I mean, it's it's so I, old school of, oh, well, I worked my job. I worked all these crazy hours. Now I'm going to enjoy life when I'm retired. Why? And you're not guaranteed it. I mean, mm -hmm. not to be vulgar, but I've had multiple people I know in my life very close to that have died in their 20s or 30 or anything. And it's you aren't promised tomorrow. So why are you going to wait? until the right time to do it. Now, I'm not saying spend all your money and, you know, live not comfortably, but why? Just enjoy life and coming through that happiness. And it does show. So I love, 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 love that motto there. So 
where are you going with your business now? Or do you have anything exciting coming up, new services or anything that you want? I want to give you the spot to talk about. So what I've started doing over the last months is um, I'm offering a three-day masterclass, like always at the end of the month. It's, well, it's not a whole day thing. It's like an hour each day and it's free. And I guide women through this process of what am I yearning for? You know, the division that I w- would like to create for myself. And then what's the linchpin? Where, where are the roadblocks? What's holding me back? And then who is this person? Who does she have to be? Because it's all about being in a way. Who am I? Who am I? Who I have, do I have to be that I will reach that goal, like that vision of mine? And I'm really excited. It's been perceived so well by the women who participated so far. And it's just like, it's a group setting. Like they experience the safe space, being in a group and getting inspired by each other. And like what I said, you know, like you find yourself, oh, I'm not the only one, you know, who is struggling with this. So it's, yeah, there's accountability. So that's what I'm really excited about to just keep doing these master classes. And then, well, sure, if women are drawn to it, I'm happy to work with them. And I've created this group now and it's called Grow and Evolve. So that's my group coaching. That's the new thing that I'm starting Yeah. That's amazing. Completely free. If you're listening to this, please go to the show notes and do it because yeah, it's free. She's not going to be free forever because this is impactful work. Now, as we wrap this up, what advice do you have for our listeners? I would say, you know, just listening to this now and maybe you started thinking yourself, hmm, what, what are my yearnings? And but then what are the stories that I keep telling myself? That's my advice to you. Just watch your thoughts. What do you think throughout the day? Because sometimes we get so stuck in this negative, ruminating thoughts and just stop it. Just catch yourself. I know it it sounds easy and it's maybe not, but it's like really catch yourself and you can even visually just see it says like a record playing in your mind. Just take that record and smash it and break the record and okay, start anew. And just being aware is already a big step you know, catching yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm in my bad thoughts because they're not helpful. They're not true. That's the thing. That's the other thing. All the thoughts that we have, they're just made up thoughts. They're not really true. Ask yourself, is it all true what I'm thinking? Probably not. Yeah. So, and it's the stories too. It's just what we make up. We are like this human beings. We are, we are these meaning making machines and, and we need to get out of that. So break your record. Yeah. <laughs> break your record. Yeah. I forgot where I read this a few years ago it was tally down, like carry a sticky note with you or text yourself every time you had a negative thought. And it was alarming. I think I was yeah. in the 50s, like I think 56 is in my head for some reason, but it was alarming how many yeah. negative thoughts. And someone else had said your same negative self-talk that you're telling yourself, would you tell to your best friend or partner? The answer is no. Well. Yeah. So I love that you bring that up because yeah. it's so true. Can I just say something? Because of course. that's related then with the energy too. You know, like all the negative thoughts that you have, it's all that's what you put out there in the universe. And that's what comes back. So your life, your thoughts and your life is a reflection. It is. Or your life is a reflection of your thoughts because it's all energy. So be aware of what you think. Or a little correction of set of saying, oh, I hope this works out or if this works out you say when it works out or when I get to this point or when I do that. And it's it's something small, but it really does make a big difference. I'm I'm one that corrects people, too, because I was like, well, I hope and I wish and I this. And I'm like, when I get there or when we do this, it's a huge difference there. Mm. Well, if you're listening to this and if you want to work with Antonia, please head to the show notes. All of her socials are there. Her website This was so much fun. This was such great energy from this podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And for those of you listening, tune in next week for another episode of That's Business. If you're looking for a career change and you're not sure where to start, the Resume Rescue can help. Sure, there's no such thing as the perfect fit for everyone. But here at the Resume Rescue, we're on a mission to find the perfect solution for you. Whether it's changing careers, updating a resume, learning LinkedIn, or practicing interviewing, we have you covered. Find us online at theresumerescue.com and find all of our contact info in our show notes.